Okay, um, so at this point, let's start talking about color uh, more seriously. Um, we are at a point where color can add a significant um, design challenges, but also uh, it, it is, it, the world is colorful and uh, we've been focused exclusively on structure up till this point. Um, so I wanted to introduce the first and simplest color uh, project which would be a monochromatic value study. So what does that mean? Um, so a value study uh, is the scale of, of tonality from pure black to pure white. Um, and we could use black and white to do that. That's color. Uh, but we could also use a color. I'm going to click on the foreground color which is white here. and show it to you in the color picker, which is coming up over here. There's another version of the color picker up here, um, where I could work my way around the color wheel here. Uh, the color wheel is stretched out um, here. Uh, you can grab the uh, little arrows here and dial your way around a color wheel this way. Um, the way this is arranged in the upper right corner is the maximum hue, which is the most intense version of a color, the kind of color that comes out of a prism um, when you shine a beam of pure white light through it. And as we proceed along the top left, we're adding white. And when you add white to a hue, that's called a tint. Okay, so a tint of this intense blue would be like this periwinkle blue. Okay, um, going back to the upper right corner, if we came down the right side, what we're doing is adding black, and that's creating a shade. Okay, and a shade is different than a tint, and these are value changes. This navy blue now, we would call that, is just merely taking this most intense blue and adding black to it. Okay, if you added white and black equally, we're just desaturating the color. We commonly call these pastels, or basically, you know, they're, they're quieter versions. So current means the color that is in the foreground currently, and new is the new pick here. So I want to do a... <clears throat> <clears throat> not changing the color, but just take a change of value. I'm going to start with a pale color up here. And when I say OK, it's going to put it in the foreground color. And I'm going to take the paint bucket, uh, which is, if you don't see the paint bucket in the middle of the tool set, it's hiding underneath the gradient tool. So you can click that. Click and hold the tool down and grab the bucket. And if I were to pour this pale purple into the middle, and then think about, I could even go lighter than that. It's against the white, it looks a bit darker than I thought it would be. So I'm going to click a little to the left, say OK, and once again, bucket it in right here. If you have a hole, and this is important, in your design, the color will leak through. So you've got to take a brush and some black and get in there and plug your holes. So it's important back when you did this project not to leave any holes. Okay, so next this is really simple. What I'm going to do is compare a darker value by clicking in this direction towards black. And I want to step this kind of evenly. So I'll just say OK to that and take the bucket and bucketed on either side of that. So I'm going to do a symmetrical gradient, darker and darker and darker as I get out to the edges. <clears throat> okay, so new versus current, okay, and bucket it in. Click on there. 
So it's monochromatic because I'm not changing the position on the color wheel. I'm just changing how dark or light it is. And just follow this same logic till you get all the way through the piece. So this is a linear gradient because it's in a line. <clears throat> And one more. This one I just have to go and click each one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Now that I look at this uh, center one, uh, now I'm thinking it is a little bit light. So I'm going to take the eyedropper to sample it to get it the exact color. And I'm going to hit I on my keyboard for eyedropper. It's also located under the crop tool here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six tool down. And when you click on any color, it puts it in the foreground. Then I'm going to click the foreground and just come over to the right a little bit more and just get it a tiny bit darker and then bucket tool and bucket it right in yep that's pretty good um, an alternate plan is to do a radial design so this one lends itself. I could go linear diagonally also, but radial would be, what if I were to start light in the middle and do a ring of darker, another ring of darker, another ring of darker, and so on. Um, we could work in a different uh, part of the color wheel also. So I'm going to come down to the yellows maybe, or yellow, orange, something like that. and click OK, start in the middle, and then do the same thing. Just progress down, darker and darker, comparing new versus old each time, or current, and then bucketing it in. I'm going to do it this way. Okay. So I don't have to finish the whole thing. You get the idea. Um, so do about four of these at least. If you want to do more, that would be great. And post it into your Google Drive. Put it in its own folder labeled Project 5. And Great. So see you in the next one.